those are without knee without intention today we will consider the first two items which will make roza or fasting batil or will invalidate <coughs> there are all together nine things which make roza batil which will invalidate the fast but we will take the first two and that is to eat or to drink now as far as eating is concerned or drinking whether it is done purposely whether it is in big quantity or in small quantity the roza is batil that means is invalidated unless someone eats or drinks while he has forgotten forgetfully if he has done it not purposely and that can only be possible in the first two days or three days that a person having got a habit of eating or smoking or drinking or whatever may just take a sip and then remember that i am fasting if he has still not yet drunk or has not swallowed he will throw it out and if he has swollen swallowed it already then the roza is not batil because it has been done forgetfully but if it is done purposely the roza is batil whether the thing which has been allowed to go down the throat is uh, edible or inedible it can be even something which is not normally eaten by human beings we allow that to go down the roza is batil now having said this it applies to drinking also now Uh, the when does man stop drinking and eating <coughs> the exact time is when namaz e fajr starts that means in these days if it is 5 o'clock so 5 o'clock is namaz e fajr time ayatullah al khui and all the ayatullah have recommended that 5 or 10 minutes before that time please stop eating or drinking the earlier you refrain the better because sometimes the clock might deceive you sometimes you might not see it properly it might be late and you might think it is still early and so many things can happen so we must not have the habit of having the last puff as the clock strikes with the last puff so that we are trying to punish allah just as he tries to punish us is he it has got to be at least reasonably before so that for 5 10 minutes it stopped ayatullah khui in his fatwa wrote to us saying that for namaz subh you may delay 10 minutes after fajr also ihtiyatan say if it is 5 o'clock you may pray at 10 past 5 but for saum that is for fasting you will stop eating and drinking earlier by 10 minutes now here there is one misunderstanding among people when i said last night that we must do niyat niyat time is from night till fajr now suppose you did niyat at 11 o'clock last night and you doing niyat every night so tonight also you say all right i will have my last cup of tea at 11 o'clock and then go to sleep so i do my niyat and you woke up at 3 o'clock many people think that having done a niyyah you can't eat again you see eating and drinking stops at the time of fajr you may do niyyah and still drink and eat because there is still time niyyah is not a sort of a barrier many people think that oh i have done niyyah now what to do now i am thirsty but i can't drink you can drink because the time has not yet come the time begins at fajr from fajr onwards then of course everything must stop it is for this reason that those people who are ill from asthma and who have to take inhalers if they must take inhaler because they cannot live without inhaler during day time such patients do not have to fast they don't have to fast there cannot be any fasting with inhalers being taken they are ill people they are sick people they are exempted but there are people and people there are certain patients who can take early in the morning before 
closing down, said about 4.30, take one inhaler and then they can fast for 12 hours, 13 hours without any problem and then take another inhaler in the evening after iftar. Such people can fast and God forbid in between if the asthma relapses and he has to take the inhaler then he will take the inhaler and break the fast, that's all. Such people who cannot, they must take some medicine which directly goes down the throat, that is not forgiven or allowed in Rosa. There is no Rosa, there is no fast for such patients. And while I'm on this subject, injections of any kind, any kind, whether the injection is for numbing, whether it is anesthesia, whether it is vitamin or whatever, or whether it is of any food value or medical value, injections, does, injections do not make your fast bathing. They are not invalidating factors. Ayatollah al-Khui has written in his Risala that no injections will make your fast bathing. But he has specially asked us to refrain from those injections which are taken for the sake of vitamins. That means a man feels that he is weak because of fasting and you can go and have one injection and the doctors will give him a sort of a prop up and he will be all right. That will not invalidate his fast. His fast will be still sahih. But you try to avoid that sort of injection. But injections, if needed, during the Rosa, there is no, no objection to it in Sharia. Please understand this. Having said this much, it is enough, inshallah, and tomorrow we will proceed further. I am tonight starting with certain glimpses into Quran and Majid for 10 minutes, the book which we have among us. The fact is, my dear friends, if we had been told that the Prophet came with Quran and when he died he took it away with him. What would have been our condition? We would have always said and spoken among ourselves that we wish the Prophet had left that book with us. We would have benefited from it. That would have been our conversation. But what has happened actually that he went away and he left it behind, saying openly on the last sermon, Inni tarikun fi I am leaving behind me two most priceless, invaluable things. Kitab Allah wa itrati ahla bayti. I am leaving two things, priceless and well invaluable. You cannot place any value on that. The book of God, I leave behind. And I leave behind my Ahlul Bayt, my inmates. Ma in tamasaktum bihima. As long as you will remain adherent to these two, lan tadillu ba'di, you will never, never go astray after I have gone. Fa innahuma lain yaftariqa. These two shall never separate, shall never go away from each other. Hatta yarida al till they both will come to me on the day of judgment near the Hawza Kalsar. These two will remain inseparable. Who? Quran and Ahlul. So he left the book. When he left the book with us, now the Muslims have only cultivated a habit of kissing it, keeping it on the head, swearing false oaths in the court on Quran, to speaking nothing but the truth, the only truth, the untruth, the only untruth, with hands on Quran. This is what we have learned and sometimes to swear by the name of Quran. Whenever you want to cheat somebody, you say Quran na kasam, because we know 
the Quran will never come and hold us. It will be on the day of judgment. On that day we shall see. Allah Ghafur Rahim. So this is what has happened. And when we have very strong faith, then we write and hang it around our children's neck. Ta'weez. The book is with us. It starts, and today I will begin for just a few minutes. It starts with what is called Fatihatul Kitab. The Quran as it is today among us, we see the opening chapter is Surah Al-Fatiha. This is Surah Al-Hamd. It is called Al-Fatiha or Fatihatul Kitab. Fatiha means that which opens. Unfortunately, we don't know. We say Fatiha means to read something for the dead. That is Alhamd. Actually, the name of the surah is Suratul, suratul Fatiha. Fatiha means the opening chapter, the opening surah with it, Quran begins. Now, you know the history of semantics. Dr. Rahim, you will understand it better. The history of semantics is such that the language corrupts and in our language Fatiha became chakula, food. That means when we say after Majlis there must be Fatiha. What Fatiha? Fatiha or Fatiha? From Fatiha it became Fatiha and from Fatiha it became Fatio. <laughs> yes. And the meaning of Fatio is to give something to swallow and eat. If there is a Majlis without Fatio that majlis is incomplete. <laughs> but actually, it has got no relation with this. It is Fatiha, which means Surah Alhamd. And there is nothing else. And there is a hadith by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Said, La salata illa bi Fatihatil Kitab. No prayer is valid, no salat is valid without Surah of Al-Fatiha. <coughs> it opens. What does it open? You know, just now we read Surah Dua Iftitah, just now. Iftitah also means opening. And this Dua which you read and I read and all of us read, may Allah accept it, is called Dua Iftitah. It was taught by Hazrat Hujjat, Imam Zaman, Salaam Allah Alayhi Wa And the opening line is, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allahumma inni aftatihu. Oh Allah, I am commencing, I am opening. Aftatihu thana'a, your praise, bihamdi, by glorifying you. The word hamd, of course, we will have to have go into tafsir of what the word hamd is. But today, it is just to introduce this, that this is Surah Fatiha. And according to Amirul Mu'mineen, oh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, oh, this oh, is a first wahi, even before Iqra, Bismi Rabbika Alladhi Khalaq. What is commonly understood by Muslims is, that the first revelation was Surah Iqra. But according to Mawla, the first revelation is Surah Fatiha, that is Alhamdulillah. Because, and it is very, very a sensible argument, that our Prophet, before even the Wahi began, was praying. And when he was praying, he was reading Surah Fatiha, because that is the essential part of Salah. The second Surah is something else. The first surah is the essential part of Salat, Alhamd. And therefore the Prophet read this surah even before Iqra, Bismi Rabbika Alladhi Khalaq came. Therefore the first revelation is Surah Fatiha, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, up to Walawaleen. And it has got two names, it has got many names, but two are very famous. One is Al-Fatiha and the other is Sab'ul Mathani. It has got seven ayah, which is Sab'ah. Mathani, because it was revealed two times. First it was revealed in Mecca, and second time it was revealed in Medina. And because it was revealed twice, Quran itself calls Surah Al-Fatiha Sab'al Mathani. 
O oh, oh, Rasul, we have sent to you the Quran and a sab al mathani which means Surah Fatiha, which specially came, and therefore it is a great surah. What does it contain? And that is over tonight. What does it contain? <coughs> Once Imam Abu Hanifa came to see Imam Ja'far Sadiq Salawatullah <laughs> And Imam al Islam said, How do you give judgments? You call yourself Imam. He said, By depending upon Quran. Imam al Islam said, Oh, so it means you know Quran very well. Because you cannot give judgment on any book unless you know the book itself thoroughly well. Oh, he said, Yes. He said, Fine. Tell me which surah in Quran begins with the praise of Allah and just as it advances it asserts human servility servitude to Allah and humility and ends with the prayers he started and said there are so many surahs here Ibn Rasulullah I don't know which Imam al-Islam said it is Surah Al-Fatiha it starts with Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. As it advances, it says, Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'een. And just as it ends, it says, Sirat al-ladheena na'amta alayhim, ghayri al-maghubi alayhim, walawwaleen. Which means, it begins with praise to Allah. Just as it advances, it becomes a surah of servility and humility to Allah. Abdiya, being servant to Allah. And at the end it is dua. And therefore, my friends, tomorrow, inshallah, we'll go further <coughs> as I will explain what Bismillah rahman rahim is because that is the first ayah and how much ulama have gone into it deeply to explain. It will give us some thinking time. It may not be very, very interesting to many, but it is the science which Islam has promulgated. And we have got to understand that book which is between. It is not just for recitation. It is for pondering. It is for thinking. When we stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we start in third person. Do you, do you realize that? Praise be to him, the lords of all the worlds. Alhamdulillah. The most benevolent, the most merciful. All third person. We are talking about him. Maliki Yawmiddin. The judge of the final day of reckoning. After having said that, immediately we turn as if we are talking to him. After having said in third person, we straight away come to second person and say, We worship you and you alone. And we seek help from none but you alone. This is what the Prophet said. That the miracle of this surah is. That it starts from ghaybuba and comes into shuhud. It takes you from that which is absent into the witnessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You start with hamd as if you are away from him. And suddenly as if you are present before him. This is the miracle of surah al-Fatiha. When the Prophet was told, Ya Rasulullah, give us one idol, one picture, at least to see, to worship, because our thinkings are always in the market. We start with Allahu Akbar and we start purchasing. And then we issue cash sales. And we forget everything during daytime, but we remember everything on the Musalla. Right? This is, this is our shortcoming. Ya Rasulullah, give us at least something before us. As we all know, it is forbidden to pray even if the photograph is on. Whoever's photograph. Remove that photograph. Even if it is my grandfather's, or Ayatullah's, remove that. It is makruh to pray in any room where there are photographs. So the Prophet said there will be nothing, nothing, nothing. Mosques must be as simple as there should be. So say, Ya Rasulullah, but then we must see someone. And the answer the Prophet gave was that you have got to realize when you say, Iyaka na'budu, 
that you don't see him, but you are praying him who sees you. When you realize that, that you are, you are being witnessed, Surah Al-Hamd has got that sort of a brilliant and very sublime quality. And in every word of it has got deeper meaning. Inshallah Ta'ala, we'll continue with that before we go to other surah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.